concepts that we talked about that tends to be a little confusing is the ratchet effect. I have never seen a free response question where you're asked to draw this, but you may see it referenced in maybe a couple of multiple choice questions. It may be choices that are wrong that you're not going to pick. But you need to know what it is. You need to be familiar with it just in case. All right. Now, something else I should mention is that a lot of economists don't even believe this really happens. But anytime you get an economic theory, you're going to have people who are proponents and people who think it's a big load of garbage. So not every book is going to agree with this. OK. Now, this ties into Keynes' idea that prices and wages are sticky. They are downwardly inflexible. Okay. Now, what does that mean? It means that prices are much more likely to go up than they are to come down. And there are several reasons for why that's the case. I'm going to draw this for you, and then I'll go through a few of those real quick. All right. Let's say, for example, that we have a big jump in aggregate demand. It can be caused by lots of different things. Uh, but let's say that the government has a very ill-timed tax cut that causes spending to, to jump up by a very wide margin. And let's, for our starting point, take this upward sloping region of aggregate supply so that this is our equilibrium. We increase aggregate demand. And for sake of illustration, we're going to do a big jump here. We increase aggregate demand. We have a big slide to the right. There's our new curve. Here's our new equilibrium. Now, that's bad. That's pretty bad. We have this huge jump in prices. Now, if aggregate demand decreases, <coughs> Such that, you know, let's say the government says, oh no, we should not have cut taxes. We need to compensate for this. And they cut back on spending programs and they cut back on transfer payments and they do other things to kind of, you know, manipulate this, institute some monetary policy to try to bring this back down. Even if they can get aggregate demand to come back to its original level. Do prices drop all the way back down here? The heart of this idea is the answer is no. That what ends up happening is that where this was our equilibrium price level, now we take our aggregate supply curve and we jerk it up so that we're moving this up to our new prices. It's a vertical shift. It looks a little bit weird. OK, now, why don't the prices come back down? Here are a couple of answers for that. Now, the one that you're probably going to be least familiar with is the idea of what are called menu costs. Menu costs are the costs of changing your prices and communicating that to customers. For example, if you go to the post office today, they have behind the counter a huge blue sign that does not have any prices on it because they have changed their prices so much in the last several years. Reprinting all of that signage for thousands of post offices was getting kind of expensive. So if they don't print the prices on anything, they don't have to replace the signs. In a restaurant, if they're going to increase their prices, they'll print new menus because that means they're going to stay profitable. If they then lower their costs, are they going to drop their prices down? No, because then they would have to redo all that stuff in order to make less money. It's not a cost-effective move for them to do that. So menu costs will encourage a business, once they have raised their prices, to keep them at that level because it's expensive to change everything. If you are old enough to have ever used a price gun, 
to sticker products in a store, you know what a pain in the neck it is to go around and pull up all the price stickers and redo them and the number of man hours it takes to change the shelf tags in a grocery store. I just wish to it's suggest that no one that fun. you teach is old enough to remember that. Well, no one I teach, but maybe your parents worked at a job at some point where they had their own cash register. Anyway, um, trust me, it's a pain, and nobody wants to have to pay their workers to do that because it's a big, fat waste of time. So, menu cost would be one thing. Another issue that you've got would be things like wage contracts. Or minimum wage. Once wages go up, if you're contractually obligated to pay somebody a higher wage, you cannot lower it. You're stuck where you are. A third one that we can look at is morale and productivity. And what does that have to do with lowering people's wages? If somebody comes to work one day making $20 an hour, and then they come to work the next day, the boss says, oh, I'm sorry, in order to keep you employed, I'm going to have to cut you back to $15 an hour? Gee, thanks, I'm doing the same job for less money. They tend not to work as hard, and you get higher turnover because people get ticked off and they leave. And if you have put money into training your workers, then you don't want them to leave because of a problem with wages. Once you have invested money in someone, you want to keep them there until your investment pays off. So you don't want to lower your worker, worker productivity by cutting wages. It's much better in the long run to fire people than to try to pay them less money because it's not as bad for your business in the long run. Another one would be price wars. If you are talking about two rival firms that have products that are close substitutes, if one of them starts lowering their prices and the other one lowers their prices, they get into this bidding war for consumers where they end up depleting their own profits down to virtually nothing. And they don't want to fight that battle. There are other things we could put up here. Those, I think, are the big ones that you need to remember. I think an excellent example of price wars uh, that's relevant today would be video game consoles, mm -hmm. where you, you'll you see um, somebody come in at a price point. Well, look at, look at what Nintendo did a few years ago. By coming in at a price point a couple of hundred dollars lower than Wii. the competition yeah. with the Wii. And they literally could sold as many as they could produce for years. Yeah. And... Meanwhile, there's a little price war going on at the next level up between Sony and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But it's very effective strategy, so people tend to avoid it because you can get hurt by it as easily as you can make a killing with it. Yeah, and this, this can really hurt a business. Now, if they push prices to the point where they're actually charging a price that is below cost, that's illegal. Because what that does is drive other companies out of business. You know, a lot of your, like, uh, big box stores have been accused of that. You know, stores like Walmart, they drive other smaller businesses out, and then they raise their prices once their competition is gone. That is illegal. So they do not want to get involved in this. They don't want to have to lower their prices after they've, waived, they've raised them. If they're locked in to wages, they can't change it. And if it's going to hurt morale and productivity, and if they've invested money in you, they don't want you to leave. 